I came across this very interesting article by chance while uploading the book of Jasher, looking for images of Abraham and then Noah and Noah's Ark. And I came across this very interesting article of a man who was a carpenter from Holland and he was so passionate about his faith, his Christian faith, that he wanted to do something to glorify God. And he made a vow to our Lord Jesus Christ, asking him to help him, to glorify his name, to show everyone that he is alive and that he is blessing this man. And he says, please help me. I vow passionate with my passionate love for you to build a replica of Noah's Ark. And through the years, he never forgot his vow and he lived to fulfill his vow. This man is Johan, and uh, since he was a very small child, he had a very strong faith. He had aspirations that he would be able to offer something to God. He said that this is beyond his wildest dreams. Whether it's a hometown kid who made it to fame and fortune in Hollywood, some children would want that, or a disabled gymnast who made it to the top to meet her long-lost sister in the process. There are enough stories about fantasies to keep the rest of us hoping. And every now and then you hear about a beautiful dream. It's so big and impossible, it seems outright, downright shocking that anyone has the faith and persistence and the fortitude, the perseverance to actually attempt to fulfill it, to see it through. This is the case of Johan Huyber, a Dutch carpenter, whose mission started back in 1992 after he woke up one morning from a literal dream of a devastating flood across his small waterbound province in Holland. As we know, Holland is full of dikes, it's under sea level, and many a time it does flood. Later years, he embarked upon a journey that he can only be that can only be described as something truly biblical. Johann Huybers, a deeply religious man, had been reading his children a book about the biblical story of Jonah's of uh, Noah's Ark, where a few chosen humans led by Noah must fill a giant boat with all the world's animals when a giant flood sweeps across the globe. That night, Hubiers woke in the morning remembering the dream where God has sent a similar flood across the many small islets of his home in the province of North Holland. At that moment he vowed that as soon as he was able, he would build an ark just like Noah built an ark before him thousands of years ago. For 13 long years he worked hard at his job. He was a carpenter and a contractor. He earned and saved enough money until he had made himself into a multimillionaire. In 2005, with his finances stable, he decided that it was now time to start building the boat of his dreams, what he vowed to build. The result is a massive wooden structure made of cedar and pine. It was built on top of a steel river barge. It's built to the exact, exact specifications of the biblical ark of the Old Testament. That is, 300 cubits in length, 30 cubits in height, and 50 cubits in width. At the moment, this massive structure, which is actually an ark, serves as a floating religious museum. It's moored outside the city of Dordrecht in South Holland. And because of its mooring there, tourists who are interested in the Bible can tour this boat, the exact massive replica in size of Noah's Ark. Tourists can visit it, can visit its conference rooms and theater and see the many carved wooden animals that can be found throughout this ship. The ship is approved for 3,000 visitors daily and it can hold up to 5,000 passengers. Given its enormous size, Hubiers feels that the time is right to take the boat on the road, on the oceans that is, so that even more tourists can experience it. What is his goal? 
to bring the ark across the ocean to Brazil. He wanted to do that in time for the Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. Now having achieved his dream of building the boat to begin with, Huibers and his backer, American businessman David Rivera, are working to raise enough money to bring the ark across the Atlantic. And they're bringing, uh, raising enough money to the tune of one and a half million dollars. To us, it sounds pretty lofty as a goal and potentially a very challenging one. But Rivera and Hubers feel strongly that the deeper religious population of Rio de Janeiro, which is home to the famous Christ the Redeemer statue on top of the hill, will appreciate the power and significance of this powerful piece of biblical lore. It's brought to life. And we, we feel that if anyone can do it, Johann Hubius can. He's already built it, by the way. And now, going back to a little bit of the history of Noah, Noah's Ark, Teva Noah in Hebrew, is the vessel of the Genesis Flood narratives, chapter 6 to 9, by which God spares Noah and his family, and a remnant of the world's animals from the flood. According to Genesis, God gave Noah instructions for building the ark. Seven days before the deluge, God told Noah to enter the ark with his household and the animals. The animals, by the way, came by themselves. It was not Noah that collected them. God somehow informed the animals, and they came two by two, as uh, was uh, told by God to Noah, they came by themselves. The story goes on to describe the ark being afloat for 150 days and then coming to rest on the mountains of Mount Ararat, which is now today present-day Turkey, in the subsequent receding of the waters. The story is repeated with variations. The Genesis Flood's narratives are similar to numerous other flood myths from a variety of cultures. The earliest known written flood is a Sumerian flood found in the epic of Ziu Sudra. Searches for Noah's Ark have been made from the least the times of Sevius, which is about 300 BC, to the present day. There's no scientific evidence for a global flood, and despite many expeditions, no evidence of the Ark has been found. The challenges associated with housing all living animal types and even plants would have built would have made building the Ark a practical impossibility. The Hebrew word for ark is teva. Teba occurs twice in the Bible, in the flood narrative and in the book of Exodus, where it refers to the basket in which Jochebed places the infant Moses. The word for the ark of the covenant is quite different. In both cases, teba has a connection with salvation from waters. Noah is warned for the coming flood and told to construct the ark. God spells out to Noah the dimensions of the vessel, 30 cubits in length, 50 cubits in width, and 30 cubits in height. It had three internal divisions, which are not actually called decks, although presumably this is what is intended, a door in the side and a sohar, which may be either a roof or a skylight. It's made of gopher wood, a word which does not appear elsewhere in the entire Bible, and is divided into kinim, a word which always refers to birds' nests elsewhere, leading some scholars to amend this to kanim, or reeds, the material used for the boats of Artahasis, the, B the Babylonian flood hero. God instructs Noah to kapar, to smear the ark with copper, which is pitch. In Hebrew, the first of these words is a verb form from the second and like gopher, it's a word found nowhere else in the Bible. Noah is instructed to take on board his wife, his three sons, and his son's wives. He's also to take two of every living thing and seven pairs of every clean creature of every bird together with sufficient food. Theology. The ark is a microcosm. The story of the flood closely parallels the story of the creation a cycle of creation, uncreation, and recreation, in which the Ark plays a pivotal role. The universe as conceived by the ancient Hebrews comprises a flat, disc-shaped, habitable earth with the heavens above and Sheol, the underworld of the dead, below. 
These three were surrounded by a watery ocean of chaos protected by the firmament, a transparent but solid dome resting on the mountains which ringed the earth. Noah's three-deck ark represents his three-level Hebrew cosmos in miniature, the heavens, the earth, and the waters beneath. In Genesis 1, God created the three-level world as a space in the midst of the waters for humanity. In Genesis chapter 6 to 8, the flood story, he fills that space with waters again, saving only Noah, his family, and the animals with him in the ark. And today, for us Christians, the ark is the kingdom of God, which we are told to enter before the second coming of Christ through the sacraments of the Holy Church. I'll leave a link below for you for this on, of course, Wikipedia and the article concerning uh, Johann's Ark on littlethings.com. Kindly support my Patreon account, since that's the only way I can continue what you like seeing on this channel. Thank you. You'll find it in the description box below.